This episode of Super GG Radio is brought to you by our Patreon. Patrons of the show can get our Dogs of Super GG Radio newsletter, Super GG Radio stickers, a slap on your closest PC or bag, input on what we cover, game nights with the hosts, and even a chance to win a copy of an indie we talked about. Not only that, but 90% of all patron contributions go to the Children's Miracle Network of Hospitals. Visit patreon.com slash superggradio to learn more. What's good, Internet, and welcome to session 213 of Super GG Radio, where we're canceling it so Joel and Alex can play Tears of the Kingdom. Thank God. No? Well, at least one of you. All right. I guess we're a podcast where friends chat about video games and all things adjacent. I'm your host and guide to the weird and wild, Eric Getty Gettinger. With me, as always, is the actual host of the podcast, Alex Arona. It's great to be back. Uh, from the California cloudiness that, that existed there, um, you will all be happy to know I found replacements for all of you. Uh, pink slips are going out today. Snail mail. Woo! Snail mail. Seriously? That's so fun. Can't you just fire us over Zoom? Yeah. No. <laughs> I want to make it real slow. As slow as my copy of Final Fantasy Pixel Remastered. I ordered it in March. Yeah. How's that working out for you? still not here it hasn't made it to america yet america what's that even all right well that's great alex thank you for being so considerate also with us fresh from the sepulcher joel dewitt what's sepulcher man you're gonna have to check that on the internet you know i've never i've never like heard that word out loud (laughs) yeah that that was that was a sincere what is this (laughs) who wrote this (laughs) like i know it's a word i've read it I just, I've never heard anyone say those Who words put this loud. here? I, I, I don't think I'm taking responsibility for that at Keeley 3s. <laughs> I'm also still like super like concerned that maybe we mispronounced it. Because again, never heard it before. No, that's definitely oh, pronounced correctly. Yep. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. I love how we all said it. We still haven't got the definition here, though. Did You could highlight it, and I think that if you right-click, it'll tell you the definition of a word really? now. Oh, is that a thing? I... Man. Oh, De- yeah, okay, wow. define. I don't right. know how to oh, use the internet. Nice. <laughs> a small room or monument cut in rock or built of stone in which a dead person is later buried. Yep. Wow. <laughs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. I don't either. I just like the way that it sounds coming out of my mouth. I, yeah, I'm surprised Joel uh, survived Games Fest, but... <clears throat> Especially from some of the text messages I was sending you guys. <laughs> Welcome home to both of you. I hope you had time to unpack. Yeah? Nope, my no. bags are still in the front. <laughs> you just dropped them in the door and, and ran inside. All, all the stuff. I mean, I've dropped them in the door and then just kept running, man. I've been going nonstop. I think Joel can agree with me that we are both very exhausted. Yeah, all, all the stuff that they threw our way is just littered all over my dining room table right now. I can't even, can't even eat there. Just too many water bottles yeah why why would I got you all that eat? swag i gotta give to you guys good luck with that you'll never find me all right finally we welcome the human dynamo himself alec parks super glad it's a normal podcast this week Woo! yeah i am too don't have you to, guys don't have to you guys don't have to sit there and actually wing it scramble and try and make things sound interesting all right yep I'm sure everyone had plenty of time to play all the demos this week Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see too many people smiling. I know what that means. <laughs> and we have I've we have three played some of them less than others. <laughs> well, it's fine. None of this matters because Alex fired us all already. Yep. All right. This week we're going to get overwhelmed in early adopters. We spam heels on the news and finally see what games we finished in the backlog blog. Blog log blah 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 blah. blah. Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> All right, <laughs> thank you for <laughs> indulging me there. Uh, transition. Willy 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 willy. <laughs> Early adopters, where we play alphas, betas, and games on games on games, guys. That's right, three games this week. Who knew that so many games existed? I sure didn't. 
So I'm going to save. A, uh, I, I will tell you, I had a conversation with somebody. They're like, oh, all these demos are out. And then someone goes, how many demos? And I listed like 15. And they got mad at you. No. <laughs> they should have. Uh, let's start with Wrestling with Emotions. Wrestling with Emotions. New kids on the block. I would just like to start off with... Not the band. Yeah. I can't believe how long it took me to figure out that Wrestling with Emotions is abbreviated to WWE. Mm Mm-hmm. I did not put that together. Thank you, Alec. I didn't consider that. It is is very thinly veiled how close they wanted to get to making this... I mean, you got, you got, was it something McMahon? Yes. But yeah. they also say, like, in an alternate reality in the 90s. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they're very close to... We've played games that are more overtly <laughs> knocking <laughs> yes, off we have. the WWE. I'm not even sure that we're allowed to say WWE without having to pay some type of royalties. So let's just stop that right now. All right, Wrestling with Emotions is a visual novel where you play as a new kid who wants to be a wrestler. Yeah? Something to tend to yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So the art style, I, you know what? It sounded like Alec played it. How would you describe the art style? It reminded me a lot of, well, early 90s cartoons <laughs> that you would doodle in the back of your uh textbooks and everything with the big hulking people and just like oh god did i actually draw that <laughs> a little bit of grunge and grody in there too yes mm-hmm. some body horrors the names lots of uh lots of thunderbolts everywhere ah yeah and the names of the wrestlers how do you feel about those alex I liked it. I was the I was the dead guy, cool bro, or something to that effect. A dead guy, cool bro. So I had I, I had uh, mech, uh, like like a Day of the Dead face paint, but but over that sunglasses and a kicking mustache. So when you think visual novel, you might not think that there's this level of customization, even for the character that you develop, that makes you fill out a pamphlet in like the back of a magazine, and you have to go step by step plug it in there's presets in it but the amount of variability is kind of crazy and then later on when you start to design what your character looks like face wise it gives you a bunch of other options so um, i had sunglasses i had crazy i think they were fangs uh and uh, my character was like the new cat uh, something, it, it, but it, it just had like a crazy amount of additional things that it would throw onto the end of your name. I will, yeah. I will also say that some of these menus were a little wonky. I had a controller Ooh. and it wanted to work, but then it wouldn't. So then I had to switch to mouse and keyboard, but then sometimes my controller would take over. All of it came down to that. Some of these uh, customization options got auto selected because it didn't know which input to use. <laughs> and I end up with, um, a wrestler that his 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 thing to show like get the crowd amped was to uh, touch his nipples. Me too. Yep. Oh boy. But mine was not on purpose. Oh, oh mine was. <laughs> mine was too. <laughs> I just want to say that w- I was trying to figure it out, and the game all of a sudden started clicking away without any control on my end, and I was like, well. That's not how I wanted this to go. That's not how I want to be known. Well, well. Too well. bad. That's exactly how I wanted to be known. The nip guy. Joel, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, <laughs> Train it seriously. No. <laughs> now you go, you're stuck on the nipples, huh? Uh, I mean, I'm looking at a, a picture from the Steam page, and it's literally a book open, and that's like a third of what is on the page is, is nipples. nipples nipples everywhere okay. oh yeah yeah, yeah. Do, do like they they focus on the chest a lot <laughs> and they're all these big hulking uh characters too but it, it's it, it is that kind of like almost cutesy flirty attitude that they've got through the entire thing like overtly it is it's gotta be some form of like dating game i think in the preview they even tout like 
17 different endings and being mm-hmm. able to partner with different people uh throughout the phase of this preview you get to the uh the arena and that I'm not sure about you, but the person that I tagged is like thinking that guy's the cool guy. He asked you to be like their tad partner, not tad partner, but you know, like the the person that sort of is like the manager that follows you to the ring. So, yeah. Like, uh, you think of like uh, Undertaker and uh, that, wait, that. hold on, let's see if you can get the name. Oh, Paul Bearer. There Paul you Bearer. go. Yeah. Good job. <laughs> there we go. Well, that that kind of thing. But also, it, it's it's just weird because it's somebody who clearly knows the dynamics of wrestling, but then it being not really this like gruff fighting stuff, but mostly just this uh, like teasing and uh, flirting kind of sensibility instead. It, it's 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 a weird juxtaposition in some ways, at least where my mind goes as to what wrestling is, because I grew up with like. Uh, like the whole Hogan's and then like the Attitude Era stuff, and yeah. I, I don't know, I don't know what current wrestling's like, but it's pretty much more of the same from what I have watched. But there's so much of pro wrestling that is the pageantry. It's about walking out to the ring. It's about who's hanging out with who, and then there's the callouts and and all of this weird stuff that isn't. The amount of time that they spend in the ring is still not as much as the build-up to it. So that's where this still game a lot really of politics nails it. From my understanding. Yeah, so it really <laughs> nails it with the uh, get, being able to select. You know, this guy's cool. This guy sucks. And then you run into the other characters and you have interactions with them, and you can you know build them up and and try and be friends with those characters. But it deliberately makes you decide like who you like and who you don't like so yep. and, and then there's an attribute system too uh it's an acronym is it meat mm-hmm. is that it yes, so it is. it's uh yep. what what is the attribute it's like attitude um the demo is playing in my ear right now um, <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard uh, all the different attributes but it's like attitude um tenacity. maybe it was m- muscles attitude uh elegance and tenacity uh, but yeah. there was like I thought some it was an s for sass no meats i thought it was meat it could be meat it could be but I could be wrong. there's yeah there's all of these different they uh, not all not any of them really related to the uh, maybe muscles but not as much related to the physical nature of it a lot of it the showmanship that yep. goes on in yeah. the ring Yep. So before you get to the actual arena, they have you do two training spots, and one of them was a uh, almost like a, a show, mm-hmm. like a, a set show, like bar kind of place, where they have you listen to a handful of tracks and describe them to this uh, yeah. punk rock chick. Um, not bad music. They clearly want you to choose a certain response option to get like the right reaction to it because they are each in series of threes choices Mm -hmm. uh i I don't i don't know if there's a change in like plus stat if you do a better job of it than uh others but uh that was a cool little thing then the other half was going to like the salon where you did more of the physical appearance change stuff which uh you didn't really get a sense of if there was any real implications of that stuff other than just like i can put rings on my fingers and you know (laughs) put polish on my nails and, and put tats on me um but but can you put rings in your nipples i think maybe those later pre- installed <laughs> <laughs> but just one yes yeah. one just one what for style uh joel brought up a good point about the music and uh, there was something that i wanted to bring up how do you guys feel about demo dog demo dog got me so hyped uh but with demo dog the gunshots in the background i okay yeah i heard that it was like he was he was supposed to be rapping it was supposed to be like a rap music thing and they're like gunshots to the beat it was a little like I, that was i was like hey i could get i could get down on demo dog and then i heard the gunshots and i was like i don't I, know what, I, I got real I poochy vibes feel about out of that yeah and i like how everybody kept alluding to demo dog it made it feel like you know you're taking part in this 
So have some fun with it. See what you can do with this experience. But man, I I like Demo Dog, but I still don't know how I feel about the gunshots. <laughs> what I appreciate is that the developers are clearly having fun oh, making yeah. this game. And and it just it bleeds through everything they write, how they presented the the actual demo itself even at the end it gives you the option to wish list or say i'll do it later and they'll even have a blurb <laughs> saying like now don't forget you said that yeah <laughs> so uh you know there, there's a lot of clever in it and i appreciate that attention to detail yeah this is uh this is something to look out for a- anything else to declare gentlemen i was um strapped for time so I didn't get the chance to play this one too much, and I was actually like really worried coming into this. I was like, I didn't get to the wrestling, <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, okay, thank God. There's thank God. yeah, no real wrestling. There's there's what like six seconds at the end where it's like, and then you got knocked out. So nice try. <laughs> uh, so that was wrestling with emotions. New kid on the block. Go ahead and check that one out. And hopefully wishlist it. This was a lot of fun to play, and it is just the right kind of goofiness in a visual novel. If you're a fan of wrestling, yeah, you're going to have a lot of fun here. Uh, The next one that we tried, oh boy, I spent way too much time on this one. Steam World Build. Guys, Steam World, as an idea, just to tell you, I went back this week and I replayed the original Steam World Dig. Yeah. Uh-huh. So <laughs> Steam World Build incorporates a little bit of that, but it also does the, you know, city building simulator. Building your city, managing it, having a lot of fun. Did you guys play this one? A little Everybody, bit. Everybody's not looking as, dodgy much, right now. Not as much <laughs> Super as I would dodgy. like to. Yeah. I liked it, but I also, like, there were pieces of it that I felt like didn't, like, I was getting kind of lost in the sauce here, where I was like, oh, build this thing, and then I'd build it, and then it would be like, oh, there's a problem, build this other thing, and I'd go through the entire menu, and there was no option for that, and I was like, well, now I don't know what to do. Uh, <laughs> okay. okay. So the cactus, so uh, you, you build up resources, was there Steam World like, platforming? No, there's no, no. platforming in this. But okay. Okay, you so it is dig, eventually you get the option to go to the lower level where you're digging to move the plot along and to obtain an item that will help you achieve your end goal. So does that go into like the Steam World Dig aspect? Yes. Yeah, so the premise behind Steam World Dig is that you are looking to dig deeper into the center of the earth to find, um, if memory serves, it's your uncle or your friend. But... In order to find them, you have to dig down, uh, collecting resources, and upgrading your equipment. So that's where yeah. the aspect of the the duality of the game, the upper level, which is on the surface, which is in the same setting as Steam World Dig, and then the lower level, which is also in the same setting, but uh, it gives you both of the opportunities to check out those areas. And they're vastly different, what you're doing on the surface and what you're doing underground. Okay, so there is that uh, there is that element there, of like the platforming and digging, but the I only had the the world building section and then I kind of got stuck. So there is like um, build like a house and then like or build uh, build like these uh, houses for your people and then you know get a mill so that they can get wood which you then turn into other stuff and get them repair shops because they're all robots. I get it. It's yep. like a hospital. Um, <laughs> there was one though that was um, build a thing for cactus water. Yeah. But then I did that, and then it said, uh, does not work, needs a field. Yeah, you had to then click on it, and then it says, place the fields next to the house, or the next to but the there location. Was no option. It was only place another cactus farm. No, not there, there was. A field. It was. It was there. Yeah, so see, you, that didn't make sense. You clicked on no two options, the icon, so. and then you clicked on the other icon, and then placed it around i only had the single icon there, i know for a fact because it, there was like was, a wood there was um i went through every single menu twice because i know crazy that crazy question if you did you select the building yeah it was it was on the building oh you have to go in see that's the thing there are some menus that you click on it and it gives you it splits up into two more options that's like, true it was like oh yes. 
So I thought I'm like looking through all of that, but no, you have to click on the building and then spread the fields. Yeah, that's a that is different than every other building that had been given to me so far and was not explained as a portion for that. I'm not saying this is a bad game. I'm saying is that I just th- that made it so that I could not progress in the demo. It did not pass the Alex test. No, I would like to do more of it. I just <laughs> saying is that in this case, that's why I did not play that much of the demos because I got stuck in a position where I w- did not know where to go next. But I will say that I like the intro, the videos, and the mechanics seem sound. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if it felt good placing those buildings, and I definitely like Steam World Dig in these digging and platforming sense. So I always am down for more of that. Uh, and you know, a world builder, I'm never against that. So. Alec, you said didn't get a chance. No, Steam uh, updated, and now I can't get it to launch. I'm having mm. a great time with Steam. Oh, no. It sounds like you're having a great time with Linux. <laughs> I can solely oh. place this blame on Steam's shoulders, though. <laughs> in, in, I mean, Alex, in Alex's defense, Steam has made an explicit point to be compatible with Linux. And yep. so there is a bit of responsibility on, on their end for that. Who Also, they did do a complete overhaul of their UI. That was like a whole thing, for real. Uh, and Joel, did you get a chance to peep this one? Not as much as I'd like to. Uh, okay. So I, I didn't get to the underground stuff. I, I'd like to hear a little more about that. But uh, I love the aesthetic of this. So the I've played SteamWorld Dig 2. I understand the sort of like Wild West Robotian kind of environment and, and I think it suits this kind of game really well and, mm-hmm. and how it's all centered around a railroad track <laughs> it's kind of a cool detail uh, functionally speaking it is very much like a lot of other building and city sim type games I, nothing overly complex from what I've seen so far uh, so you're not going to get like the sim city level of granularity on some of that stuff or having to like route power lines to different buildings and create those kind of grids it seemed like most of the connection was mm-hmm. with roads um, yeah but sim city you have to do all that stuff from the start if, if they gradually oh, yeah, build right. it from the outset and help you learn throughout the process I think it'll make it a lot more palatable uh, yeah. but steam world's known for their palatability the stuff that they do is really like it's simplified to but then add in the difficulty and the complexity as you go yeah but i'm a big fan of their work even if i haven't played all their stuff uh steam world did too i haven't finished but it's very visually arresting and it has good gameplay loop i'm i'm confident that they'll have figured out the right loop for this game too Mm-hmm. yeah there's still time there's plenty to explore plenty to do in this demo i got to the point where i needed to just set it and forget it for a little bit needed to grind out some resources so i could uh go further i don't know that i needed to i just felt like man if i walk away for 15 minutes i could probably get enough lumber so that i don't have to wait to do anything so uh, the the fast forward button's your friend getty yeah, I, I did. Oh, I, I, had, the fast I had the fast forward button going too. I was just like, "Yeah, I'll I'll take a quick break from this." So I came back, and then I was able to build like fifteen more houses. So just to put it into perspective, did I need fifteen houses? No. Did I want it? Yeah. So, um, Steam World build though, a lot of fun to be had early on. We'll have to see what goes on with it. It is very much aligned with the dig part of steam world not so much your shooty shooty space pirates or your turn-based uh what gilga mech the the card battler that they put out oh yeah but still centered in that universe and creating a new story i always find it so crazy that this team has put out platformers uh worms like turn-based uh, battling game and then obviously the card battler and now this is their next such a good job of that too of like really pushing the like going into different genres but never really like having a problem with it they it's it's very fluid it just works yeah 100 percent. and i think that's why i am always super excited to see what they're offering next so yeah. i also find the way that the themes sort of stay within that same world too so the way they're able to flush out their world by these different disparaging types of games and uh, 
having that sort of t- sort of tonal consistency is really cool. Mm-hmm. So, robots abound. Check it out, Steam World Build. Yeah. Speaking of robots, yeah. Last one for the week. Hey guys, you hear about this Lies of P game? <laughs> no. Lies of P. No, nobody's heard of this. No, nope. tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> you all know Pinocchio. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's this. This it's that's that. Yeah. That's grim, the whole thing. bloody, gory <laughs> Pinocchio. Yes, we're all familiar. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Lies of Jiminy P. Cricket on your on your hilt, uh, your hip. He's on your belt. Yep. yep. So if you have not heard, or you maybe are not as interested in uh, Souls games, Lies of P is Pinocchio meets Bloodborne. Not a hundred percent, because I will tell you that there's some more ease or accessibility when it comes to Lies of P the uh, amount of time that you have to go through and find the shortcuts is not as extensive as what you would experience in a Bloodborne, but it's still there. Uh, As Alex has said, deep, dark, terrifyingly gory. It's, uh, I mean, this is probably a day one purchase for me. So who got an opportunity to play some Lies of P? Is your hand up? Did you raise your hand? Yeah, hand We're an audio I, based, yeah. <laughs> audio yeah. based format. I, de- I definitely got got the uh, opportunity to play it this afternoon. Um, I prioritized this one over all the other ones, and I think that they did a great job tonally. They really do a uh, they do well to implement the shortcut system, the winding paths. You know, you go one place. You find a winding path that goes all the way around. Oh, there's a gate. You unlock the gate, and all of a sudden now you have a shortcut to back to where you were. It's very labyrinthian in that way. The combat is there. I think that I do have reservations as Bloodborne was, you know, I Bloodborne is like one of the peak Souls games for me. Mm-hmm. And that game feels very fluid and fast and kind of free-moving. And to me, unfortunately lies of p feels very stiff i love what it's doing but the movement feels very like i like i can't like dodging is very forward backward side to side not like uh you don't have like a it doesn't feel like you're a 360 movement type person and i know you can why i'm just saying why are you trying to dodge very, everything like, what why are you trying to dodge everything i'm because t- my sword breaks man you got parry man I, my sword broke you you are familiar with the fact that you can use your elbow to grind and repair your blade, right? I did not oh, figure come that out on. in the menu, man. <laughs> come on. Where was that in the menu? Alex, I'm fairly certain that the video that I shared with you, I even did that either at the beginning of combat or in combat. So that, that you could see. does not sound like something you so, actually did. Yes. The character has a weapon that deteriorates as it's used. However, by holding the square button on a PlayStation controller, he would grind the sword against his elbow, which is, he's got one mechanical arm, and it would sharpen that's the blade. That's if you use the item, I assume, because that's the square button is the item button. Is it the item and button? Yes. Oh. And so my then, square button did not have uh, an item that would that would fix it for me. Did you go up or down? There's two I did. parts of the belt. I did. I would have to go into my bag, so put it on my wheel, that... and then do it, but I did not have any repair kits. I found one. But there, it's not a repair kit. Thing. It's an item that's already equipped to you. Then that item was not explained to me. I don't know what that <laughs> was. What you're referring to. It, this game <laughs> also failed the Alex test. Because I do have a repair kit. I got a repair kit at you the get, end. And you I get like well, one repair kit. I know. I think I ended up with two, but I don't use them because my elbow works. I don't know how that works, <laughs> but the uh, but still, like I'm dodging. Well, what weapon did you pick? So the first time I played it, I went with the heavy stance. The second That's time it. I played it, I did the balance stance. Okay. I went with the heavy, and uh, it's it's a heavy sword. Uh, you, it's it's pretty pretty flu. I, I thought it was pretty easy to like swing. It does swing in a pretty, like it doesn't it doesn't have the heft of a of a Dark Souls. That you're not slamming that thing down, uh, which I thought that might have been better to do so. But it got a similar leveling system. You get this quote unquote the souls, and then you 
use those to skill up your skill points and uh, larger than life bosses I did not get to one but you know I still had a very good time with the enemies that I was fighting and uh, yeah I just felt like the the movement I wanted a little bit more of like a yeah range of movement that's like my biggest uh, biggest complaint I think but I, it doesn't mean that like I didn't love everything about like oh someone trying to talk to you out of your walkie talkie and get G- get Jiminy and you put Jiminy and he, he's your light source mm-hmm. uh, just stuff like that You're getting little magic abilities with different weapons and weapon hilts so you're you can take off the handle of your weapon and switch it out with something else and that gives you a defensive ability right versus changing out the blade will give you an offensive ability it's this thing has got a look are you excited then are you thinking about getting this one uh, I, it was a day one for me. Now I'm like, let's see how the reviews go. But I'm still, I would still want to play it. Okay. Like I, I want to fight the boss in the demo, so I plan on going back tonight. There's two. So oh you know. really? Yeah. Sick. Uh, anybody else get a chance to play this one? I had the opportunity to, but I chose not to. Okay. You chose violence. <laughs> you know, sometimes you just gotta swing for the fences and hope that you make it out okay this conversation's a real home run yep so <laughs> is that a reference to something nobody, uh, nobody old knows. always sunny in philadelphia hmm. don't feed into it <laughs> uh so liza p like i said this is uh, probably something that i'm gonna end up getting right out the gate i'd I'll probably have to sit with Alex and walk him through some of the... Oh, man. Or I could just, like, sit and watch you play it. That sounds boring. Oh, not only for you, <laughs> not for me. I'm very excited. All right. I love watching I love watching people play video games in person. So we're not, we're not going to bore you guys anymore. We're going to take a break, recover, recuperate, and then hopefully come out fresh in the next segment. So fresh. So clean. <laughs> Hey news, I heard you main DPS, so I'm here to help. Joel, you still overwatching? Uh, no. Alright, fantastic. I, I'm double not overwatching now. <laughs> he made a good life choice. Okay, yeah, I'm glad. Don't uh, do that to yourself ever again. So big news this last week, Summer Game Fest. Yeah. Keely 3. I like that we were wrong the entire time. It's Summer Game Fest. There's only one game. Yeah. And it was just one core. And we didn't get to play it. Yeah. Nope. Who dropped the ball on that one? We're just not cool enough. We'll get there. How many times did you offer to take off your shirt? Uh, Only the one. Well, that's. (laughs) And he said, sir, you're already shirtless. Follow up question How many drinks did you pitch on the ground? (laughs) Just the one. Just the one. (laughs) Uh, you, uh, if the ca- if there's an official count, it's like Tim Gettys two, Greg Miller one, blessing or blessing one, and me one, and I think that's it. There's a lot of people who threw drinks on the ground. That's decent company, at least. So yeah, can a I lot ask of people were throwing drinks on the ground. Where the glasses just particularly slippery or? No, not not entirely. In this case, <laughs> this one was, and the one for me, it was. It was like the it was a it was a party, and we were leaving. And as I was leaving, it just like went whoop right out, just whoo gone yep. slipped. I mean, that's what he says. There was but... a nice sculpture around me. My hands could have been wet. <laughs> There's a, some speculation here. Yep. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. So you guys went. But there were some guys from like the two who were like Tekken bodybuilder cosplayers. Mm. That's why my shirt was off. I was trying to compare the pecs. Yeah, how did that go? See whose pecs were popping more. Who's the were? answer? Not mine. All right. Now wait, if Alex gets to take his shirt off, we get to take ours off too, don't we? That's not how this works at all. Well, Alec, let's see how close he. Gets. <laughs> <laughs> he was going to do it too. Okay. Uh, like I said, we never do anything that could possibly get us banned from Twitch ever. Mary Kish well, already just, said they were probably going to get banned. Who? It's just nipples, right? I'm below nipple on the screen. Who is getting banned? I said Mary Kish will ban us in a second. 
Or don't no. you have the connections now? Yeah, that's hey, why she'll ban us in a hey, second. She, she, she ever, she's a little too busy with other things right now. Did you ask her about that Christmas tree? No, I didn't. All right. I did just, not get just to checking. That. Just checking. All right. <clears throat> so Summer Game Fest was a thing that happened. I hear some of the the games that they t- did get uh, to talk about, or these are the ones that we were we figured that we would be excited about. Okay, were you excited about any of these? Yes, and I thought you would be as well. Well, we'll see how that goes. First one up, Persona Five Tactics. This is it a is, game. It is the uh, Persona Q style artwork where it's real chibi characters, also lots of tiles and XCOM likes. Getty, this is so your jam. I don't know. I don't know if you could call it my jam. What? You love tiles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> Aren't you a big tile boy? No, I, I'm interested to see what this is going to be. Uh, is there a time frame for either of the Persona games that were announced? 2020. Uh, for Tactics is this year. Uh, Persona 3 Reloaded is next. Okay. So we'll see. Uh, I have done the Persona Qs. I've done the main uh, line series. I still have to finish up uh, three and four, but uh, it's not a concern. It'll happen eventually. Uh, Tactics, I don't know. I'm interested, but again, even with the video that they showed off, is it really going to embody the spirit of Persona? We'll have to see. I think it will, uh, but I also think it's funnier that every time they do one of these like side stories, they add in a new character who then they, they quickly remove as yeah, a canon. Exactly, because Persona Five Royal character is completely gone. Persona, Persona Five Persona Strikers. F- Persona Five Striker character is completely gone. gone, and now they introduced a new character again. Yeah. So, you know, just normal shenanigans over there at Atlas. Spinoff. Uh, to uh, Persona 3 Reloaded. This is completely remade, remastered, uh, re uh, redunned. Yes, but they did not do a good job and everyone's mad. <laughs> Aww, that's unfortunate. Everybody they, should uh, be mad. Each uh, the, the Persona 3, 4, and 5 formula is always here's the game then in a year we will release a sec uh, uh, another version of said game but now like with like 60 hours more content of post game story and there's persona 3 then there's also persona fes fes is the one with all the bonus content etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. this version is just the main game no fes content wonderful oh so, but it's like the FES contest again is like another ending, and it's like sixty hours of extra content and stuff. I mean, again, also they did add the quality of life changes that were in those new games, but still missing the whole back half. So it's kind of weird. You think you should just wait, and then wait? You think they're going to make a, another remaster of another of the back half? I don't know about that. Would you put it past it them? DLC. That would be good. DLC would be good. And a lot of people are mad about there not being a female protagonist because they're what they, they in the PS Vita PSP version they they let it so that they made a female protagonist. I don't know. I just want the I want the back content. So we'll have to keep an eye out. Yep, we'll see what happens. I'll take a Persona Six. Nowhere in Word sight. Is they've started. Yeah, but Word it's nowhere in started. sight so far. Yeah. Next game, Star Wars Outlaw. All right, that's for you, Getty. Okay. <laughs> did, did you like? Did you look it? Did no, I didn't even look at this. What is it? Explain it to me in detail. Ah, uh, googling. <laughs> We're gonna right. come back to that. Payday Three. Alex is hype on Payday Three. We got gameplay. You got to play. No, we got game. Oh, you got to watch somebody else play. Yeah, very excited. <laughs> Surprisingly, Daddy, none of the games we played are on this list. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was, I was taking a subtle dig here into the fact that none of the games that you guys did get to play are here, and then I'm not even sure that you'll get to talk about them very much for us. So we'll. Uh... I like that you guys are going through this whole thing, and I'm like, I stop listening. Uh, open world Star Wars game. Uh, it looks to be third-person shooter, but, like, again, open world. It looks really cool. It looks really detailed. You get to be... And it's between 
Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. Uh, lots of conniving, lots of shooty shooting. Are you just Spaceship describing stuff. Shadows of the Empire to me? Uh, kind of, but I don't think Shadows of the Empire was open world. Yeah, this looks real good, Getty. You're on board. <laughs> Thanks for making the call on that one for me. All right, I'm still coming down from the high of finishing uh, Jedi Survivor, so. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. You'll be into this. I need I need a little bit of time. All right, Payday 3, you got some gameplay there? Yeah, I'm very excited. Anything about more Payday. Also, again, I'm looking to restart a Payday uh, because I told you already, Payday 2 got real complicated when I tried to come back to it, so it's impossible for me to come back now. Mm. So you're going to do the Payday mobile game? No, uh, I want to no, play Payday 3. No, I want to play. <laughs> Give me Payday, Payday 3. 3. <laughs> I want to play mobile. But it's like it's Injustice fun. Mobile. I can't believe that's, that game is still going. Yeah, you should be playing it. It's messed up. No, you know what's really messed up. What's that? Pal World? No, I was going to say... <laughs> All right, what's that? <laughs> Did you see Pal World? No. Have you not been talking about Pal World? Are you no. interested in Pal World? No, I'm also not Googling that, so... Pal World is Pokemon, but everyone gets AK-47s. Yeah, no. <laughs> That's really what it is. I'm sure you it is. Pokemon, but and they're adorable, and they're even ado- more adorable with handguns. Joel, do you condone this? I- I've been sitting in silent disappointment this entire time. <laughs> Joel, you know. saw this trailer and you were like, man, that's that's real cool. Yeah, it's, I can think something looks cool and know that I'm not going to play it. <laughs> Dude, the, Both I'm looking true. at, like, I, I pulled up the the trailer and the, the snippet, uh, the artwork is like, it hits a little green monkey with a... With a <laughs> With, with an assault rifle. <laughs> I don't know how and I feel about this. And then there's a giant this. Pikachu bear with a, with a minigun. This trailer rules. I'm into it again. I just got myself extra hyped on Pal World. Oh, there's sheep with, like, turrets. Oh, there's a dragon with a rocket launcher, and you're riding on his back. This is sick. Okay. At least one of us is having a good time right now. Yeah, yeah. for real. This is a real uh, audio. Uh, <laughs> this, is a, this is a nightmare right here. <laughs> And Joel's going to spend six seconds splicing this together and be like, good luck, everybody else. Yeah. Um, oh, real cool. We still have more games here. We do. Alan Wake 2. Uh, people really like the... The, the first the one? De- no, the detective <laughs> uh, style of game that you will like have to go and find clues. You would then... We'll go into like a different like little pocket universe and you will have like a board and you will take like the red string and start connecting clues and it's it, and it's not something like it's done for you you have to do it to figure out the like the story plus uh survival horror elements you know you're making that joke about oh people like the first one this is actually better or not like the first one because it is more resident evil than anything else also there is a two uh two protagonist alan wake and uh another female detective the fbi agent saga i think her name is saga alan wake only available on digital later this year yeah that's a thing so it's a whole new thing keeping an eye on that one really excited about final fantasy 7 rebirth is that coming this year supposedly claims that it is but I'll believe it when I get a date. Yeah, the um, what I saw, what we what we saw, all looked pretty cool. Especially the uh, was it Cosmo Canyon? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh. Getting some Red Thirteen action finally. You got some Red Thirteen action. I always get Red Thirteen action. I mean, no, it's but, more uh, like a Red Three. Do you think we'll make it to the Gold Saucer? In this I film? hope so. I think I saw them sitting down and talking at a hotel, which is like, you know, roughly the, the gold saucer section. We were at the, ho- the Haunted House Hotel. Yeah. It's got to be there. Yep. It's going to happen. <clears throat> but this year, I don't know. Well, I mean, but they're also claiming there's a, like, first off, there's a two disc thing, which means it's massive. But also, they're also claiming that, oh, this is only going to be a three parter. Yeah, so is the Fast and the Furious 10. But now it's a four-parter. We all know where this is going. I 
not to go off on a tangent here, but I had heard that Vin Diesel is upset with Jason Momoa for stealing the show. Good. <laughs> he sh- because Jason Momoa was excellent in that film. And how was Vin Diesel? I could hardly understand him. It sounded like he had gravel in his mouth. How? But was it about family? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of. Hypothetical. I mean, Would yeah. you rather... And you you just be dead honest with me. Be one of the people that CGI's Vin Diesel into the cars when it's doing stupid stuff or remove okay. all your fingernails. Uh, I feel like that's a pretty easy one. I would definitely not want to remove all my fingernails. <laughs> I've lost one before. It was awful. Yeah, but uh, I guess maybe I just thought it was more of a tedious and mind-numbing job to put Vin Diesel into a, a car with CGI. Oh, it uh, absolutely is. And he's barely in these cars. Anymore. <laughs> <laughs> now you could tell he's not in these cars. Good God. What are we doing? All it's right. almost as bad as Brian being in a car. You're not in that car, buddy. <laughs> it's all sad. We all grieved. You're not there yet, Joel. You'll get there. I'm, I'm aware of the event. <laughs> no, there, there, no, again, no you're spoil- not there yet. There's no spoilers. <laughs> No, you're not. You're not. No, again, you're not there yet. Mm-hmm. When it happens, you'll you'll you will shed the tears that you need to shed. Right now, it means nothing to you. Joel, the whole series is based around cars. Thank you. I, I, I just got <laughs> done with six, so I'm I'm, yeah, Joel's a, I'm jo- starting Joel's to learn. Joel's other a show, bit. Uh, his his show about uh, was it binge buddies, is uh, watching all the Fast and the Furious, and you just got done with six, and six was a good one. Yeah. Definitely on the top three. There we go. All right. I'm pretty well, sure six comes after five. Was that the building jumping one? No, I think mm. that's seven. No, that doesn't sound right to me. Does, does, was this one the does plane? Five. That was the plane. Six was the plane. Five was the heist movie. Four. With the safes? There's a heist movie? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I thought safes. one was a heist movie. They're all heist well, movies. Well, kind of. Yeah. They're, they're all yeah, heist really. movies. You catch my okay, okay, but five is really a heist movie. They steal yeah. a vault. They a, a vault. They, that 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 whole cool. movie is literally that gif of uh, Rick and Morty where he says, "You son of a bitch, I'm in." Like that. That is the entire movie for that. We really went off on a tangent here. Yeah, I know. Uh, Joel. By the way, no regrets. Uh, Jason Momoa, his, char- his character is the vault guy's son. That's Spoilers, stupid. Alex. That that it doesn't spoilers. actually really I, I, implicate yeah. anything. You just ruined I, I, everything. I love the fact that they have no problem like retconning or twisting events in order to fit oh, yeah. the future narrative. Like they they have no- oh, and they also do that. They do the thing where they're like, "Remember when you saw it from this angle? Mm-hmm. If we turn the camera slightly to the left, that guy was there the whole time." And it's like, "No, he wasn't. <laughs> You're lying to me." <laughs> but son of a bitch, I'm in. All right, let's go. Next one. All right. Most exciting news of the night. Two new Yakuza games. Another Like a Dragon? Oh, man. I thought okay, they did you were see that all trailer? Like a Dragons now. They Austin mm, powered no. so hard. Oh. Yeah, I ended up watching it. It was good, right? I'm excited. Yeah. Alec, you didn't get the chance to? No. It's uh, He wakes up on a beach. And he he doesn't know where he is, and he's completely nude. And they do the thing where every time he wa- he's walking straight up and down, they keep putting stuff in front of his crotch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's good. So very good trailer. Yep. Yeah. And then there's another. I, I don't think it's part of the. Is it part of the main story here? It depends on who you ask. Uh, it's supposed to uh, fill uh, in a gap with what happens yes. to uh, the original main character. Cure you. Yeah. He's the best. When he's uh, not in witness protection, but he's off the grid. Yeah, he somehow got out of everything. And, uh, <laughs> somehow. That, that was, that, that's kind of how it, what his ending was, is that he, you know, he had kids and a, and a family, and he got off the grid, and here's how. Yep. Anyway. So that one's also kind of exciting. I, I'm not as big of a fan of the fast-paced combat in those i've come to appreciate the turn-based yeah a little bit more for like a dragon so keep an eye on that one but uh, i think a lot of people are genuinely 
pretty excited that they're still making these. Oh, I think we had more than just one of these, but Fall of Porcupine goes 1.0. We talked about Fall of Porcupine probably like, shoot, two, three weeks ago? Yep. I yeah. would say before we left. Right before we left, huh? Yeah, I really like I like Fall of Porcupine. I've already bought it. so. And there was something else that popped up on Steam for me. Let's see if I can figure out what else went 1.0. You guys didn't put Starfield in here anywhere. That's weird. Is any, are you guys hyped on Starfield? Are you? I'm not. Door, door to gone? Oh, that's... A, no. Uh, yeah, door to gone. Door dogni? Dogni? Door to gone? Are you speaking English right now? We I don't think he is. Door, D-O-R, D-O-G-N-E. And anybody can verify that? I can neither confirm nor deny. Okay, that's good. <laughs> just came out. <laughs> Since we have the silence, Brock, just to let you know, uh, if you want to get actual coverage of our Summer Game Fest time, go ahead and listen to this week's Nintendo main, because we didn't do it here. <laughs> I mean, we could. I was going to put it in the doc, but it's up to Getty. No, we can't we legally do it. We're not affiliated <laughs> with them. I don't want to get you in trouble. It definitely doesn't get us in trouble. For oh, sure. no, I'm pretty sure it does. <laughs> ah, tape to tape. That came out. That's a, that looked cool. Oh, that came out a couple yeah. weeks ago, but I don't know if we said That's, it. That's it's not out yet. It's is early access. It says it's out. It says it's released. It? it says it's released. Is that true? Mm. No. It's early access. It went to early Go access. play it right now. <sighs> Alex will buy you a copy if you email the podcast at <laughs> Uh, I mean, that's not wrong. Yeah. Mail at superggradio.com. Yeah, mail at superggradio.com. Do it. Mail him. If you don't, we'll just have to send you some random games. I don't know who you are. Hey, who are you talking <laughs> about? I don't know. Next. <laughs> Freebies. 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 Hey, you guys like free games? Freebies. 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 We got some bangers this week. What? For real. Guacamelee 1 and 2 over on the Epic Game Store. Some of the best Metroidvanias ever created. I like Guacamelee quite a bit. Be a wrestler, a um, uh, luchador with a mask who gets uh, super mystic powers and will use those powers to Metroidvania his way through the underworld mm -hmm. uh, because he is stuck between both worlds. They are fantastic platformers, fantastic combat with wrestling and grappling moves. It's some sick stuff. In your face I action like. with hell yeah, a pretty funny story. Mm -hmm. I should get around to actually playing those. They're free. Fantastic. You could turn to a chicken. Mm -hmm. I've had them on Steam for couple of years now i bought them as part of a bundle but also free <laughs> also free <laughs> on something that he doesn't ever use. i know he's not gonna game use store it. He can't even he can't even say his normal line so yep crusader kings 2 over on gog Crusader Kings 2 is like a it's more of a strategy style game but also works on a lineage system where you can uh, have children well, that, that will then supersede you, and then you play as them whilst going around and uh, fighting massive war wars and conquering lands. Next up, The Pulse of Evil on Steam. Top-down, shoot-em-up shooters, uh, but, mo but in a creepy, creepy, ominous, forgotten mine uh let's very like trying to be resident evil but top down and it looks frightening even has a system uh, an inventory system like the resident evils where you're trying to fit pieces into a small grid mm. okay we have cat aclism over on steam that's with a hyphen Cataclysm, a 3D isometric action-adventure game where the player must use different abilities throughout the game to defeat enemies and solve puzzles. Uh, tilt, tilt, uh, top-down, twin-stick shooter, but uh, you are fighting evil cats. Robot cats, villainous cats, all the cats. Yeah, that, that mm -hmm. sounds accurate. 
You say that like there are good cats out there. Probably one or two. They're all jerks. You just haven't met them yet. Yep. Fair. <sighs> Last one, Cosmic Coliseum Prologue over on Steam. Uh, it seems to be a twin stick, a, st- a twin stick <laughs> shooter week, Woo. as we now have uh, Cosmic Coliseum: The Prologue. Fight for your freedom as you battle through wave after wave of alien adversary in this action shooter roguelite. Destroy enemy fighters and collect XP to raise your level and become more powerful. And then combining your skills with new abilities for impressive combos uh, and making the ultimate weapon. Hmm. This thing seems very bright and, sh- and a lot of uh, particle effects. Hordes and hordes of enemies. How many? Like three or four? I'm seeing a couple hundred. Okay. All right. All right, news. I can only help you if you don't pull aggro. This sounds very familiar. That's why I'm... I, it's that's why it's I'm, so satisfying when you have, like, the, you're playing World of Warcraft and you have, like, the add-on that shows your aggro. And you see the tank get aggro first, and you wait a minute, and you wait a minute. No, no, still there's no aggro. wait a minute. And then you see there's that no meter of his fill up with aggro on your little mod, and then you go there, do all your special abilities, and all of a sudden yours just shoots past the tank, and then the boss turns around and one-shots you because you're not built to be a tank. There was no That's wait. So it was, oh, I don't think you should be standing over there. Automatically draw, falls out of stealth, gets ganked. <laughs> I don't wipes, stand in fire, Getty. Wipes the raid. <clears throat> Alright. Well, then I'm dropping. I'm dropping out of this raid. Getty out. And we're back. Back with the backlog blog where we play games kinda like Tetris. Hey guys, let me tell you about Merge and Blade. You ready? Okay. You yeah, sure? Tell me about Merge and Blade. All right. Merge and Blade. You, I'm the audience surrogate. You know that you uh, are a big fan of idle games, right, Alex? You kind of just yes. like set it, forget it, that kind of thing? There was one I recently definitely that I've am. been playing, but I can't remember what it was, but there's a couple of them that, okay. I, that I do engage with. So let me introduce you to Merge and Blade, where okay. you have a grid of... Uh, if, so... Uh, let me just walk it out you have a a grid based area and you have units every time uh, you get to drop units it'll be two units and it can vary Uh, as you progress through the game you get better units so it starts out with two farmers you take the two farmers you pick the position that you want to drop them on the board okay you drop it new units drop it again if you combine them if you match four or three or four or more, then it'll combine them into the next rank of unit. All right. Is this wh- when? Where do the microtransactions? Come there out? are no microtransactions. I guess you could buy stuff to upgrade it, but this is a very much complete game. I'm not giving you my social. It is. I wasn't going to ask for it, but I already have it anyway. I talked to Beth last night. Dang. You already have 16 copies of this game, but this is. Oh no! This is very much not a <laughs> mobile game. I played this on PC uh, through the xbox game pass so oh cool you take these units you drop them combine them and then after you run out of units to drop you go to battle all right the battle is your units facing off against enemy units and they'll just clash against each other they all have uh, your units will have different moves so your farmers they just like pokey poke you evolve those pokey guys poke. into uh, blacksmiths blacksmiths have a hammer that stuns your enemy if you match enough blacksmiths up you get a soldier who's got a sword and he can attack at diagonals so because it's this grid there's five spots and there's six spots sorry six down and i want to say it's like eight back eight rows all right so uh it'll be a a character in each of the spots and then uh, if you succeed you move on to the next round your characters that survived your units will remain and then you get more units to drop into the board, trying always to level up your characters and defeat the next wave of monsters. How long does this go? Uh, there are 20 main story missions. And if you fail, 
then that's fine. You just move back to the begin, beginning of that level. But you get coins from defeating enemies and from completing stages, and you use that to further progress what you have. So let's say you want more units to drop per round. Okay? You purchase that. Mm -hmm. You can purchase uh, upgrades to the character so that they have more health, deal more damage. And then you can, you you can also uh, uh, do other stuff. Like, do I want to drop a higher level unit at the beginning of each one of the level or each one of the matches? So merge and blade, while very simplistic in nature, because it's, it's like Tetris where you're just dropping units and trying to combine them, uh, it can get super complicated and super aggravating at the same time. So once you hit a threshold where you've got all of these units that are on the board, you don't have a way to move them around unless you're in a battle. So either your character or your units are dying, and then you're filling them in and you're able to drop more uh, units in the, the end of the round, or you can swap the position to try and line them up, upgrade your units that way. But you only get so many swaps. So ideally, this will take you... I think Game Pass said it should take you 10 hours to defeat this thing. Just knock it right out. No. <laughs> no way. It's a hard one. I don't know who put that in there. Because unless you have a silver spoon placed somewhere inside of your body, uh, you are not getting the drops that you need in order to defeat this game in 10 hours. And even optimistically... You need to get enough of the the currency, the coins in the game to upgrade your characters so that they can withstand the onslaught that is the last stage. Oh, boy. There are enemies. Most of the enemies are pretty straightforward. They'll just attack straight ahead. But then you start to get really into the weeds at the end, and these things will just obliterate an entire row of your your units. You'll be like, oh, they should be... Nope, everything's dead. And I'm like, hey, that... That wasn't very nice. And then there's other ones that will be like, no matter where they are, the enemy on the other side of the board, they'll just like, that one's dead, that one's dead. Like, killing your characters from across the room. It's not fair. <laughs> ten hours? So you're saying... Ten hours. The ramp, the ramp up is not what you oh, really no. wanted. Did I stick with it and finish it? Yes. Why? Because I wanted, I wanted the satisfaction of saying, I, I did it. And you know, it was it was mind-numbingly fun at times to try mm-hmm. and get that combo, trying to match as many of these little units together to get an upgraded unit. But then there were other times where I was like, I I can't even put anything on the board here. I'm not gonna win this. And that was a little disheartening. I'm not gonna back out of the stage though. I yeah. have to die. It's the only way I become more powerful. Merge and Blade. You're like a Saiyan. <laughs> Over on Xbox Game Pass, you don't have to try it. I played it for you. You're welcome. There you go. <laughs> Alex, another game that's on Game Pass. Fuga, Melodies of Steel 2. Lay it on me. So, turn-based RPGs. You know them. You love them. Do you? Now with cat people. <laughs> for all you furry friends, I got the game for you. <clears throat> for all you World War uh, World War Two people, I got a game for you. Got a lot of... This is all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, really, Melodies of Steel 2. Really word. <clears throat> Child soldier fans. <laughs> all right. All right. How... <laughs> Can we talk about this game, or is it going to get us in trouble? No, it's good. It's um, In the first game, you were a bunch of children whose town was attacked by a giant, massive, world oh, no, no, no. tank. You're a bunch of cat children. Cat children. Okay. Just make sure that you qualify it before we commit any war crimes. <laughs> well, you're committing war crimes, buddy. Oh. And uh, in this game, the cat children are back. They have survived the war of the first game grizzled exhausted but and weary but have made it now in the first game your your tank the you end up in a tank a magic tank 
that has a uh, has an AI that talks to you and helps you out. Suddenly, the government asks you to come check out your old tank. As you go there, uh, it locks some of your friends in and starts going and driving off on its own. Uh, and it's like without you. It's just whoa, like whoa. auto driving. Did you? Are you describing a rogue AI? Yes, I'm living a rogue this. AI. I'm living this every day of my life now that we <laughs> are in Microsoft. Uh, what is it called? Dynamics. So, hmm. rogue AI. Every day of my life. I don't know what that's like. Cool. It's terrible. <laughs> You're like, oh, this just sounds like it. Until this you thing get can't. Chat GPT go. Yeah. Uh, the, people still try and use that too so <laughs> so in the actual gameplay of it you are in a tank trying to get your your old tank back your friends each have a specialty type of gun whether it be like grenade launcher regular cannon or like machine gun the each color coded and you have three positions on your tank and you can swap out people so if it, and it's it's a like more of a timeline rpg meaning you see who everyone's turn is next if you see a blue tank, you shoot it with the machine gun, which is also blue. It pushes their turn further back, and that's their weakness, etc., etc. Same with yellow, which is the grenade launcher, red for cannon. You're playing with weaknesses, also with armor. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> As some enemies have, uh, enemy tanks have armor, and you use the machine guns to take the armor down. You have three spots, and they have three spots, so you're trying to, you know, destroy their three spots uh, sections before you do. Each one of them has HP. It's very, it's a very good turn-based RPG with weaknesses and color coding, all of that alike. Now, <clears throat> what makes it complicated is that all of your cat friends hang out and have fun and do things together. You want to cook dinner. You want to harvest some some uh, some corn. You want to pet the sheep. You want to go fishing off the back of the tank. All of that. So it uh, was it Slay the Spire like you have like a path where you can go down these these combat encounters, mm -hmm. but they have intermissions. And in your intermissions, you hang out with your friends. You do what you want. And doing so builds up their companionship and then also will make it so that they will synergize better in actual combat. So you said fish off the back <coughs> of the tank. None of you guys even blinked. When he said that, I am like, how are you fishing? <laughs> what are you fishing for? Well, you're for? trying to get, you're, it's like a junkyard town, so ah, you're trying to get other junk. Okay. I, I watched a tiny sliver and play this, so I, I got a taste for the weird already. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, nothing surprises me anymore. Okay. So there's that. Then on top of that, occasionally you get into a dungeon, and you platform through this dungeon to a, a, uh, a get treasure. Platform the tank you as a character go into a dungeon as a cat person. okay because i thought that most of it involved you being in the tank but got it now there's actually a lot of systems here that's kind of why i'm going through it piecemeal just because there is so many systems do there need to be the dungeon crawling feels very tactile. does it okay does it make it feel like a more <coughs> complete game yeah the, it, that feels very tacked on but uh, also, there are towns in between in each section, and the towns are pretty much like talk to everybody, and sometimes it'll give you like a prompt. Hey, man, I need some help with something. Can you help me? And you could say, I'll give an encouraging word, or I'll give him 200 bucks. And doing so will cause something else to happen in the town. Like, oh, that guy ended up finding treasure, and he gave you some. O or that guy was like, oh, thanks, and then leaves. You, so there is like a little bit of a risk reward on some of these, like, oh, I'm talking to somebody. But it's pretty short, finite. You have only have like six options to do these do these things, and then once you're done, you go back into the moving the tank and fighting and doing all that stuff. Okay, important point. <coughs> what is the currency? You said two hundred bucks, but I I doubt that they use the American dollar. So what are they using? Like uh, cat cat uh, nip currency, or are we talking like fish? Is that the currency? Uh, in this one. No. The thing is about it is that, uh, and the other side of it, this is basically kind of Germany or some Eastern European town. Okay. So because of that, it's not like a jokey currency. It's like something like something. It's like, it looks like gold discs. That's kind of jokey to me. <clears throat> yeah, but I'm saying is that the game is, while the game is 
cute and furry like in nature it is a, it is deathly serious <clears throat> one of the mechanics in your game is that if you're losing a combat encounter you have something called the soul cannon where you can take one of your furry friends load them up and shoot them uh decimating them literal murder and will one shot the enemy <clears throat> didn't we have something else like this I, I think it's like mechanic sounds familiar. Alex was describing this a couple of weeks ago off air. Okay. And uh, yeah. one of the games that I have played in the past is the like 3DS. I think it was Valkyrie Profile Covenant of That's Bloom. That's the one. Yeah, and you could sacrifice a character and it would make them infinitely powerful. But at then at the end of the that combat encounter, they were gone forever. And you have to watch their death scene. But this just sounds like it's... Is it's not happy fun time when you shove your friend into the cannon, is it? No. Do they want to go in, or have they just no. like made peace <laughs> with the fact that they're going in? Oh, there? they make their peace. They basically say, "Well, if I have to, I guess that's just I'll make the sacrifice." It's never like a sure. It's always like, "Well, you know, if if if, if my death means everybody lives, then I guess that's what I need to do." <clears throat> and mind you, they make it very clear, and they keep making it clear. Hey, this kid's nine. Mm. But that's cat years, <laughs> they keep, right? They keep making references like, oh, by the way, I'm only seven. It's like, oh, man. I mean, seven, if, yeah, if it's, but cat, if it's years, cat years. But if it's cat years. And like... they also, well, they all have, like, teddy bears. But also they keep referencing that, man, war is hell. <laughs> I have a lot of confusion in my body right now. Joel, Joel, again, Joel has watched some of this, and he was like, oh, okay, this seems real grim. Yeah, and you gave me a summary within, like, a 30-second span of time, so it was just, it was a lot to take in. A yeah. lot. And, but it, it's really it's really fun. It's really fun. The, the, there's no way to grind. That's one thing that was kind of interesting, is that it's just a linear path of, like, going from point A to point B with splits to make the combat either easier or harder if you want better loot. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's pretty much like very, very linear. So you're just going from combat encounter to combat encounter and making your decisions on what weapons to use to hit what weaknesses. Okay. <clears throat> pretty involved, so, though. How, how many hours in are you? Right now, I am 10, and I am probably halfway. I don't know, man. You tell me. I'm gonna look it up, right? But I'm probably longer <laughs> than. Uh, yeah, I'm probably uh, a little under halfway. Under halfway, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's it's pretty much again a, a very linear, con uh, complete story. That's you know it's, it gets to the point, doesn't drag on too much. And I'm liking I'm liking what I'm playing so far. And uh, I think that yeah, Getty, you will definitely dig into this one and knock this one out relatively quick. But it's a fu it's a fun one, especially with the. The mix of tones. All just sounds confusing to me. But that's Fuga Melodies of Steel 2. You're going to stick with it? You're going to finish this bad boy? Oh, I, yes, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like it. All right. Nobody else has any other games they want to talk about this week? Okay. Nope. I guess me and Joel play some Street Fighter Six, but we'll talk about that probably another time. No, I don't know that we will, but <laughs> you can sure try. <laughs> I see that smile. Oh, uh, you got something planned? I mean, no, I'll just try because it's a really good game. Yeah. Did you make your own character? Yeah, I did. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I mean, but that's not even, like, what's good about it. All the other characters are good. Okay. The gameplay's good. Everything else is good. So I guess that means we can start to close up this bad boy. Let's move on to our one last thing. This week's one last thing is brought to you by Missing the Starfield Showcase. Oh, man. Too bad you guys didn't get to stay through the Starfield <coughs> Showcase. That game looks like... Well, it sure looks like something. Uh, it's on my list to watch. Sure. Okay. <laughs> is what? I'll watch it. I'm, I'm catching up. I'm right. catching up right now on all the stuff. Man, if you play that, you just 
Oh, there's no no. Yeah, that's what I. That's what, I, that's what I thought. That's what I was. No, I just want to see what it is. I'm not even sure it knows what it is, but <clears throat> it, it's trying. It sure is trying. It's coming out in September. Uh, hopefully, my one last thing this week will be that. Well, golly, guys, I'm 90 hours into One Piece Odyssey. I'm pretty sure that I'm three-fourths of the way done. I could do it. I could finish this game before Final Fantasy 16. Maybe. Do it. Do it. Well, Marathon do Night. Too. I do. I actually want wow. to platinum it. Wow. <laughs> and that... I don't think that that's going to be an easy feat, but this game is, it is just so much. It sounds like a lot. It is. It is a lot. And it is unnecessary in most cases, and I'm still just like, well, I'm going to do it. Alex, one last thing. Uh, Every time I do go to play something, I'm like, well, I could also just play Power Wash Simulator. Yeah. (laughs) I'm more than halfway done. That's what you think. I was on a I was on a five hour conference call and I played it the entire time. I don't know if you should brag about that. <laughs> it's not about it's not a brag. It's a problem. It's a real problem. It, it sounded like a brag. It's a real problem. <laughs> I like it. Like I have other stuff to do, man. Yeah, it, you could wash. Power wash. <laughs> All right, Joel. I'd like to uh, donate my one last thing to Alex so he can tell the story about the uh, clock in the hotel. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we got back uh, in a long day. We slept probably like three hours the night before and then slept on the flight. And then we uh, the next day I got a, I got a, you know, just a, hey, you stay in our hotel. Here's just all the bill stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll just look at this bill stuff because, you know, whatever. Who's going to pay attention to that? I already paid this. <clears throat> and it looks like uh, we have eaten $40 of mini bar, <laughs> <laughs> And we have somehow stolen a $150 clock. Okay. Uh, and I was like, well, that's not correct. So uh, I called the place and I said, hey, uh, what's this about a clock? And she goes, well, there was a clock and you left. And there was no clock. Now, on the other side of this, Alex here, to uh, much to Joel's chagrin, yep. uh, has been video blogging our entire trip to Summer Game Fest. <laughs> and I've been sending it back home to you guys. <laughs> okay. And that included, hey, check out this sick hotel that we're in. Here's us filming the entire hotel. And I then said, hey, manager, we didn't have a clock. He goes... There was one there, and I go, hold on, I have video evidence of there not being a clock here. (laughs) And I then provided, I emailed him, said evidence, and he goes, you know what? There is not a clock in that room. And I go, I know. And he said, I will give you all your money back, including the minibar. All right. Very good story. Yep. Great uh, customer service from the Ace Hotel. I wonder who took that clock, though. He said, oh, man, that must have been the couple before you. I said, I don't know. (laughs) Were they blogging their trip, too? Who knows? Who knows? Alec, I would hate to be you and have to follow that up. (coughs) Yeah, you know, I got nothing good. Uh, I realized that part of the problem I'm having with Yakuza, like a dragon, is that I'm only playing it in, like, 15, 20-minute chunks, and Mm. that really breaks it up too much. You can't get them done. Yeah, so I'm going to go back to virus busting and play some uh, Battle Network. Okay. Need to get a good chunk into it. I understand that. It is a very involved game. Story heavy, too. Crazy enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That'll do it for this week's episode of Super GG Radio. Before we go... Getty, what can they drink? to get them sleepy or get them energized um well you can drink poggers.com and use code was it gg at checkout good game good, good game. game good game at checkout for 10 percent off your order <clears throat> that's drink poggers has anybody figured out if if anybody's bought drink poggers no okay joel look into that joel you're the numbers guy make some numbers up 
Got it. Awesome. Before we go, you can find us on Twitter at SuperGGRadio. <laughs> Is that accurate? The world may never know. <laughs> Just shouting five <laughs> over. Okay. And twitch.tv slash SuperGGRadio, where when we're not banned, <laughs> Thursday is our podcast day. You might be watching us much like, is anybody watching us right now? Uh, your wife is. Well, I'm sure that she's just saying terrible things to us in the chat. <laughs> Mondays, uh, we're going to need an edit here. Alex has finished going Super Saiyan. He has put Kakarot into the beat list. So do you have a backup for your Monday nights? I do. I don't. Not yet. I will figure something out, though. I definitely have a lot of things in the backlog that I'm ready to just like pull the trigger on. I just need to do it. I'm very excited, though. Yeah. Like not not. Kakarot was excellent. I, I'm, but I'm also excited just to like see what else I'm like I have. I could dig into. Good. Good. All right. Tuesdays. <laughs> Tuesdays are also dedicated to Alex with his dope beats and Skater XL. Check that out. He's back at it. Hell yeah. All right, guys, if you'd like to reach us with questions or input, our email address is mail at superggradio.com and provide us a review on iTunes or the podcast app of your choice. Thanks for listening, and good game, Alex. GG, Getty. Good game, Joel. Good game. And good game, Alec. GG. Funny soundbite here.